As I started making this doll, I wasn't really sure exactly how she was going to look. You'll often hear artists saying that you should make lots of detailed plans and drawings before you start a new project, but I don't tend to work well that way. I think if I was to try and plan everything out before I start, I'd never get anything done. I just have to start, get some momentum going and see where the doll leads me. All I knew when I started making this little one was that she would be a girl based on my 22 centimetre pattern. I'm using my white cotton base fabric for this doll. She's going to be quite dark and gothic looking. I haven't bought any new fabric for a while, so I'm working with what I've got. I've picked out some bamboo fibre for the hair in purple and pastel lavender, so that will be my inspiration for everything else. I've chosen black and white 3mm stripes for the legs and for the upper arms as well. I'm stuffing the pieces with kapok fibre and bead jointing them as I go. The wrists are simple hinge joints. I found the easiest way to do this is to stuff the hand first and sew along the joint line with some extra strong polyester thread and then stuff the forearm afterwards. This way you can make sure it's not overstuffed and the joint has some flexibility. I think a little bit of purple here and there would look really good with the hair colours, so I'm painting some cute little Mary Jane style shoes in purple acrylics. I found it's easier to do this before I attach the legs to the doll. I'm starting with a dark shade of purple. I add a little bit of fabric medium to the paint and this helps it to sit better on the fabric. I mostly use System 3 acrylic paints with the Deco Art fabric medium. I usually give it a couple of coats to cover the stripes and then I'll build up the highlights with some lighter shades over the top. I use a hairdryer to dry it and heat set it between the coats. I always start the face with the eye shading. I shade the entire area that will go behind the button eyes. I don't want any white showing through the buttonholes. I'm using Derwent Colour Soft pencils because they're nice and smudgy and highly pigmented. I blend the shading with a Derwent blending pencil. It can take a bit of time to get this right. I want a nice soft edge all around the buttons. When I started making dolls, I used to hand stitch the line detail on the faces, but now I prefer to use fine liner pens. I can get much finer detail this way. I was always far better at drawing than embroidery. I'm using Derwent Line Maker pens. These are great quality and they're vegan friendly. I'll put a link to where you can find them in the description. I recently started adding some shading below the mouth as well as around the eyes. I think it just adds a little bit more personality. I've made the bodice part of the dress from black quilting cotton fabric with some polka dot print ribbon around the top. I fitted the bodice to the doll by hand stitching darts in the sides and closing the back with ladder stitch. I've made some underwear for her with some purple lace. I attached metal beads to the upper arms as I was making them, so now I just have to attach them to the shoulders. Knots are all hidden under the clothing. I used to button joint the shoulders. Button jointing is a great technique, but I found that bead jointing gives the doll much more natural range of movement. And I like how it looks. I'm careful not to pull the thread too tight. I want the arms to hang naturally and to move freely without dangling or dropping from the shoulder. The skirt is made from the same black cotton fabric as the bodice. I've sewn some lovely vintage look cotton lace around the bottom and put some pleats in it to give it a bit more volume. 
it will hopefully be just above knee length so you can just about see the knee joints peeking out below the hem. I'm needle felting bamboo fibre directly to the head using the Clover pen style needle felting tool. I've got three needles in it. I'll keep going over the fibre until it holds firmly in place. I'll cover the whole scalp layer by layer until there's no fabric showing through. I buy the bamboo from a small business in West Yorkshire, near where I grew up, but you can usually find bamboo on Amazon as well. It all looks a bit messy at the moment, but I'll blast it with a hot hair dryer to straighten it and then give it all a trim. I place the bamboo fibre in the direction I want the hair to fall. She's going to have a fringe or bangs at the front. I used the felting tool with two needles in it to get a fine line along the parting. If you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more. I've given her a collar length bob. I think it works really well with the two-tone effect of the bamboo. I love this cute little kawaii style skull and crossbones charm. It works perfectly as a necklace on a length of satin ribbon. For a finishing touch, I've given her a bracelet of purple glass and silver tone metal beads. I'm really happy with how she's come out. I've named her Penelope Raincloud. If you'd like to see how I make the clothes in more detail, check out the video on screen next and I'll see you next time. Bye!